The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, traditionally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Good afternoon, folks. Well, um, we've uh, started the show today with the silver chart. The reason I did that is there's such a divergence here that it's just absolutely unbelievable. If you'll take a look at it, you'll see that silver can't even take out the 61% retracement of yesterday's range, where gold has taken out the highs of the last two weeks. Uh, this is really unprecedented. Uh, it, it's just been a phenomenal move in gold today. We moved um, from the low to the high, uh, well over uh, $25 uh, per ounce, and silver can't even get out of its own way. That's a really negative thing to silver, in my opinion, because if uh, gold starts to sell off, silver will sell, sell off a lot faster. So uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but the fact that this divergence is here, uh, really is uh, very very significant. Uh, the other one that I wanted to mention that I that I think is uh, very very important that we talked about uh, on the show uh, the other day, and that is the uh, dollar index. Uh, we are right at that spot where uh, we we were looking for the dollar index to come in. I wanted to put this into uh, Tiger TV so you folks can take a look at it because it is such an important. Uh, chart to look at because we have completed uh, all of the A, B, C, D patterns that we've uh, looked at here ahead of time. Uh, we're right over the, the time we're supposed to be looking at it, the August 6th. Uh, we hit the exact number, uh, 81.77 so far early today. So if this is correct, uh, we'll be looking at a potential uh, turnaround in the euro. Uh, the euro right now is trading around 133.50 uh, area. And uh, we made a low of 133.30, I believe, overnight. So it's still near the lows. But uh, if this dollar uh, chart is correct, uh, the euro should turn first because the euro is 53% weighted in the U.S. dollar index. So that's why I believe we're at a really critical level here uh, in all of these currencies, the pound, the yen, uh, all of them. They're all just, uh, of course, most of the cross rates that I follow, all the cross rates, that I follow are related to the um, U the U.S. dollar. In other words, the dollar versus the the yen, the pound, the euro, Canadian, Australian, Swiss. Those are the ones that I major major look at. We look at the pound yen occasionally, and the yen yen pound. Uh, you know, with the major with the G force basically is what we're watching. So we'll look at it soon. We'll have uh, probably within the next oh I don't know maybe next year or so the Chinese yuan. The RMB will be uh, included in the uh, in the dollar index possibly, and that should have some type of effect. Why it's not in there is because China does not allow it to be treated freely, and therein lies the the problem that you have to uh, that you have to think about when you're when you're doing these things. Now <clears throat> we uh, we've come down last night. We were down about uh, ten points in the S and P. Uh, we were making, you know, the, the German index was just getting absolutely hammered, and then it started to turn around, and then the markets, you know, had its rally back so far today. Folks, we have broken some major stuff here. Uh, we've talked about this many times in the past uh, past few days that, you know, we're the price objective that I'm going to be looking at here, if you'll just give me a second, I will uh, put up a chart here of the uh, E-mini S&P, and uh, we have made uh, last night or yesterday we made a perfect uh, A B C D pattern exactly at the 382 retracement up at that uh, 1936 level, and that gives a price objective of 1865 on this move down. Now, if we get above 1930, that is going to negate this this pattern. But right now. We have uh, today's high so far that we've been watching is uh, within a half a point of the exact 618, that range from yesterday's uh, high at uh, 18, 1936 down to the low last night. And we've had this quick snapback rally uh, stopping so far at the uh, 1924 level. But, whether, you know, if it gets above that, you know, then it could have a, a, another rally 
and you you want to look for your secondary place to uh, to try to uh, put on a short position in it. So um, the, the the market just looks uh, uh, incredibly bearish, folks. That's all I can tell you. I uh, there's <laughs> there's no other way you can look at it. I want to put the VIX up here because uh, Basil did such a good job of. Um, describing it all i'm going to do now is to put the uh the chart up with the uh numbers that, that i'm looking at and uh we uh, we went right up to this uh uh 618 uh, retracement we've stopped there uh three four days now that we've been right there uh but frankly uh we haven't really come down very much either we're just in this little uh congestion range here but with these long bars that we're having here in the VIX index was telling us there's a little bit of fear, you know, coming into the market is that we uh, look like we're going to uh, probably break that out in the next two or three days. Um, you know, the market has held up relatively well, given all this, and the VIX index never went above the 61% retracement of that February uh crest that we or crest that where we had the uh, crest in the, the VIX up around the 2100 that's when we were selling off dramatically uh, around uh, February 3rd that was a really really key day uh, in the stock market which is still remains uh, as the, the focal point to look at of course the one on April 15th is also big but uh, the one on February we go below those February lows uh, in the stock market we are going to be uh, in big trouble um, well we're you know this is a wonderful country no matter where we live or anything but yeah, the only thing is is the trouble will mean that it will be uh, you know a little bit more of a sell-off uh, uh, more dramatic is what I'm looking for I think the minimum on this swing down is 1865 as long as we don't take out 1930. So if that's the case, we'll we'll keep uh, we'll keep watching that. But a real focus today is that dollar index to me because uh, that that chart uh, it's hard to trade. Well, you can trade it, but you know it doesn't have a lot of players. But um, it's just such a beautiful technical picture because you have the AB leg is perfectly equal to the CD leg in price, and it's within a day or two of the exact. Uh, day in uh, time also and so uh, that 8177 8180 level in the dollar index is just really really important i think that'll you know see some big movement in some of the currencies uh, we're having a little bit of a rally in the euro as we speak but that basically is uh, as they refer to it uh, in technical terms a dead cat bounce but we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, tomorrow on the uh, commodity show uh, we should have rich anderson on uh, we've been trying to get him uh, back again because we have so many things happening in some of these grains. It looks like the corn and beans are trying to make uh, a bottom. It looks like wheat has finally made some type of a, a minor bottom anyway. But we'll we'll wait to talk to Rich about that uh, tomorrow. Also, uh, I'm going to do my best to have uh, Mark Douglas as a regular guest at least uh, once every two weeks and almost assuredly at least once a month. Uh, I had to long talk with him yesterday uh, we traded together yesterday and i i just uh i told him i said you just have so much information and people listen to you like it's the gospel so please uh you know come on so i think he's he's considering it anyway and uh, my bribe is out there i don't know if he's going to accept it or not but we'll have to wait and see speaking of bribes folks uh last night i had the uh the great pleasure to watch trading places uh, the movie with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy, probably for the 100th time. And, uh, guys, if you have never seen that movie, it is fantastic. And if you ever, uh, if you, if you ever get to Philadelphia, uh, on Broad Street, uh, in downtown Philadelphia is the Wells Fargo Bank. And that's where the offices of Duke and Duke were. Uh, that is really an incredible place. The building was built in 1930. It looks exactly like it did in 1930. I had the great fortune to go into the building. Um, it was about you know, three years ago when Avery was born. And when I walked in, I said, my goodness, I said, I've been in this building before. And the lady said, do you like to watch the movie Trading Places? And I said, oh, my God. I said, this is Duke and Duke. And she laughed, and she said, just a minute. And she called the uh, the manager of the bank, and uh, he said, are you a big uh, 
you know, a big fan. I said, are you kidding me? I said, my best friend bought that partner's desk that they uh, found the drugs in. And uh, he said, uh, you know, he had that. Uh, he, he bought it at an auction. And he said, come on. He said, I'll show you something. We, he took me up to the second floor of the bank, and uh, this is where the offices were. They were exactly like what was in the movie with the wooden paneling and stuff. It was just, uh, you know, just just absolutely wonderful. And I, and I happened to be a little bit involved with that because when I was at Drexel, uh, Don Amici, you know, who played one of the Duke brothers, uh, was uh, one of my accounts. I only got to meet him once, but he was a really nice guy. And I'd met Dan Aykroyd uh, three or four times, but the guy I got to really know was Paul Gleason, who was Clarence Deeks. Uh, Beeks, Clarence Beeks in that movie, and of course he's in a lot of other movies too, but uh, uh, he's a really nice guy, and we used to see him at the racetrack all the time in, at Hollywood Park, and it was really brought back so many memories last night, I, I was sitting there watching it, and I had tears in my eyes thinking how many times I'd watched it with my buddies uh, through the years. That movie was filmed in the Orange Juice Pit at the old comics building in the World Trade Center, and uh, most of the people in that pit were floor traders and secretaries and stuff that came in, and they had a huge catering party afterwards. It was really a, a really a terrific thing to uh, to be involved in, and I wasn't in it. Uh, several of my friends were, but I was not in that, so uh, my fee was too high. I, I get too too high a price for my uh, my personal appearances on the. Uh, on the silver screen i've turned down three academy awards so far but uh maybe the fourth one we'll see whether i'll do that or not i better get serious here or i believe that uh, uh mr o'brien will probably have me replaced with the talking monkey which might be a you know big improvement folks i really believe that the bradley model is really showing us where we're going uh, I, it really looks that way to me. Uh, it has uh, all the earmarks of a, uh, wow, the Japanese yen just absolutely collapsed, uh, the dollar versus the yen. Just let me show you this, folks. While we were while we were talking here, the euro has shot up, and the Japanese yen has, uh, versus the dollar versus the yen has uh, made a big reversal here. That usually means stocks are going to go down, but I don't know if this is going to be at this time. But this is really a phenomenal thing. It, my beeper started to go up and uh, <laughs> started to go off, and uh, you'll see that we've really hit a. Um, this is only a 15-minute chart that I had on my work. Let's just take a look at the daily, and you'll see that uh, we have uh, we've done some really serious uh, damage with this wide bar moving down now. Uh, in the Japanese yen, so there must have been some kind of a. Now, well, it couldn't be because it's tw ten minutes after, quarter after the hour that wouldn't have done anything. I don't know what it is, but certainly a lot of selling has hit the uh, has hit. Uh, you see, it has affected the market a little bit, but not too much. But uh, we did hit the fifty, the Fibonacci retracement of that um, number. Uh, from the previous day's high. Okay, we're going to go. Got the Dow up today and gold up, and the bonds are down. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. 
This Red Lake Green Light Market Profile System dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the signal box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment and the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, and we have a caller from Florida. David, are you there? Larry, how are you doing? I'm good, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, i got, got a question for you, but uh, before I ask it, uh, going back to train place, that's a great movie, man. It really that's is. I, I know so many. That's a, I've, I've seen that movie, uh, you know, more than any other movie uh, ever. I mean, I've seen a lot of movies a lot of times, but um, that by far is my favorite. I saw it the first time in 1983 at Water uh, Water Tower Place in Chicago when I was trading on the floor, and I sat through it three times. I enjoyed it so much, and then I went back the next day and saw it with one of my best friends, and we both just thought it was uh, phenomenal. He liked it so much that he wanted to get that desk, and he he uh, actually contacted John Landis, who was one of the directors, and uh, he said, yeah, he said it'll come up for auction, and he bid on it, and he, he won it. It was that uh, that partner's desk that was in there. He paid uh, 1000 bucks for it. I think it's a lot worth a lot more than that because it was 85 years old when he bought it 30 years ago. So Wow, wow. What can, uh, I, what can uh, I do for you, my friend? Um, I wanted to ask you a question about uh, harmonics. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm taking your your trade advice, and I was looking at the video you had earlier on the harmonics, good stuff. And you mentioned in the video about you know a, a typical movement of about three percent. Does that same rule of thumb apply to let's say like uh, the E E mini, for example? Uh, yes, it does. But the E mini is such an easy one because we've looked at every swing. 
uh, you know, you can actually statistically look at the swings uh, of the E-mini, and the most common one, of course, is 3.5 points, followed by the second most common, which is 5.5 points, and those are the harmonic numbers, you know, for the E-mini. Now, on days like today, when it's really wild, it'll go three times or four times or five times, you know, harmonic number. And so what the harmonic number does is it helps you to to define the risk that you have because it, once it goes past, the, you know, 5.5 points, uh, in the S&P, you don't know where it's going to go, so that's what your risk factor happens to be. That's the real benefit of looking at harmonic numbers. But the number of people that go in and look at the market, you know, actual technically like you should, you can count, you know, on like zero 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 two percent two people out of of a thousand will do that. And uh, right, right. it was Jim. It was Jim Twentyman's concept that he. You know, he showed me this 40 years ago when we were working together at Drexel, you know, how silver moved uh, 17 cents at a time and gold moved, you know, $17 and $34 at a time. And, you know, we brought that forward, and uh, it's just amazing. Well, statistically what happens, David, if you look at the value of whatever you're looking at, let's say you're looking at IBM at $190, and you multiply that times 3%, you're going to come up with around $5 and a half. And so that would be the amount, maximum amount of risk that you would have to risk, you know, with uh, IBM. And if you went and looked at a 30-minute chart on IBM, I most, I really, I haven't done it in a long time, but I would imagine you're going to see a five-point swing happen quite a bit, you know, on a 30-minute chart. Because it's like right. it's like a D, it's like a DNA count is what it is. It's basically that's what you're looking at. So uh, taking that and applying that, let's say that 3% rule to the S&P for, for your comment a second ago, um, that's about 57 points. So you're saying that yeah. really that 3% is not the best to apply to S&P because of just the, well, the number and better to go to 3.5 to 5? Well, 3%, but if you take if you go 5.7, see, that's where you're going to, that's where it comes in at, you see. You can't take 57, so you take 3% of, of roughly 100 and, uh, 1,900 is going to be roughly, uh, it's going to be about 9 points right now, right? 3% would be about 9 points? 3%, uh, well, I'm looking at the S&P, looks at like the ES Mini right now, it's currently trading like 1919. So mm -hmm. wouldn't 3% be around like 57 points, 3% of 1,919? That, five, five, there it is, it's 5.7, that's exactly the, exactly the number. I, I did 5%. I didn't do 3%. I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, 3% of that would be 5.7. You know, I, I just I just throw it out there. If people want to go and check it, it's up to them. But I'll, I can tell you statistically it's going to be really close to 3% because we've looked at thousands of these. And they that's how we, you know, we did these all by hand and statistically. And then when we went back and looked at it, the computer came back and told us, look, these are basically 3% of everything you're looking at. And that's pretty much what happens. <laughs> okay, so basically, it's, you, in your experience and your work, three and a half to five is generally what you see on the uh, ES ES Mini. Oh yeah, yeah, you'll see that. Uh, you'll see that uh, uh, a lot. <laughs> you see it everywhere. Okay, okay. You know, it's another one that uh, from a uh, cross pairs that uh, tends to hit the Fib numbers really, really well is, and it's getting smoked right now. Is the uh, the Euro Yen. Um, that yeah, yeah. on a pretty consistent basis, too. Yeah, the yen is looking bullish to us, so we'll see. But thank you for calling in, my friend. I thank really you, appreciate Larry. it. appreciate it. May God bless. Yeah. And we'll be back in a few minutes, folks. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com.
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can't use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we've got one of our favorite people on the line. And I can say without any hesitation that this guy knows as much about these markets as I will ever know. John from Philly, are you there, my friend? Larry, I always just adore talking to you. Um, oh, I'll send you the twenty dollars. Don't worry, don't worry, don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was hoping, I was hoping that would suffice. Good. What Larry, can I do uh, for you, my friend? Well, first, everybody, uh, everybody I know just loves the film trading places. I will tell you, uh, of course, having resided in Philadelphia since the mid '80s. My wife and I have spent many a night lounging in Rittenhouse Square Park, which is where part of sure. the uh, the film occurred. Just a that, yeah, that's at the, at the beginning when he was on his little skateboard pretending to be a a veteran. A veteran. <laughs> exactly. By yeah. the way, just just a tidbit. You you accurately mentioned the participation of John Amici and John Landis. But what you might have might have slipped your mind, the producer of that film was Mr. Yep. Aaron Russo. It sure was, who, and he was in he was in the film. I don't know if you knew this or not, but he was in the film as a butler. 
and, you know, during, now during one of the parties. It. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Larry, um, we have uh, successfully navigated a, a topping process in the U.S. indices in mid-July. Now that, uh, now that a wave of selling has driven price down, I want to ask if you would pull up IWM. That's the Russell 2000 ETF. Yes. And what I, uh, the first question I had for you is, from your perspective, assessing patterns and cycles, is there any conceivable bullish scenario emerging here in IWM? Oh, I'm absolutely. not suggesting there is, but I wanted to ask you that question. Absolutely. I posted that in to our viewers, and I, I focused it on um, last week. You know, we've held above those Mondays, that last Friday's lows by quite a bit. That was an exact 786 retracement. It was a three drive to a bottom pattern when it went down to the 110 level, and now we're trading at 112.20. Uh, and so we've made a very significant bottom here in that. Uh, it also has some cycle components between February and May and May and August. They're, they're nearly perfectly symmetrical, so uh, it's set up to rally. The question is, is how far is it going to go and if it's going to go? And it's certainly it's, le it's leading the market right now. You know, it didn't make a lower low yesterday like we did in the S&P and some of the others, but uh, the IWM certainly didn't do that. Indeed. Um, might ask you, is there any price level that, that occurs to you that if penetrated on the downside would be a signal to you that all hell is breaking loose sort of thing in the IWM? Oh, yeah. 110. 110 in IWM. And you get below that. See, we were there five days ago, and we had a little bit of a rally. Uh, what we're doing now is we're matching the last rallies that we had. This is uh, this could be nothing more than a short covering rally. We don't know that yet. But if we'd get above the 114 level, then the, then this thing could have legs all the way up to 117. You you just don't know. But uh, you know that 110 level that is that is etched in granite in my head because if we get below that, that's equivalent to what happened when we went below the Dow at uh, 16,800. That uh, yes. Basil was talking about, you know, uh, he was talking about that area of 16,800, 16,840. And when we went through that, I mean, it, uh, you know, they turned the lights out for a while and it dropped, uh, you know, 300 points from there. So it's, it was a pretty significant drop of, you know, 3% very, very quickly. Indeed. Larry, I, uh, I thank you for that. I wanted to ask if you could. If you could say a few follow-up words on a, on a on, well, it's a related but separate topic, and, and I appreciate, uh, thank you in advance for doing so. Um, today, with so much turmoil taking place, be it war, be it immigration and border crises, be it with what appears to be an emerging plague crises of some sort, and news buffeting our psyche just right and left. Uh, I'm finding it during this kind of environment it becomes super critical as a trader to be able to remain, you know, uh, with peace of mind focused and not reacting to many of these stimulus that, you know, can, can hit us all. Could you John, just you, share yeah. a few words on how you deal with that as a trader? Well, you just described why I'm a technician, John, because I was a fundamentalist for, oh, the first 10 years of my trading life with a little bit of technical stuff. But since 19, you know, 74, uh, when I got into cycles and Fibonacci and stuff and some astrology, I, I realized that the news really follows the market and, uh, you know, you have to respect the reports and what people do and everything. But technically, when I look at a chart, I can see everything that's happening without, uh, you know, worrying about the fundamentals. What, I, what I'm really interested in is the interpretation of what happens. Like if something really, really bullish happens and the market reacts badly, that market only has one way to go, and that's down. Because if there's no bullish news, uh, it's certainly not going to go up on its own. So if you see bad news in a, in a market that's been going down and it stops going down, you might want to think of buying it because, uh, you know, that, that'll be the, that'll be the case. So, 
I, I don't follow the news. Uh, you know, I, I, I turn on the TV in the morning to make sure that I'm that I'm still here. The world hasn't come to an end, and I check for <laughs> assassinations and uh, you know currency devaluations and stuff like that, an occasional interesting news item of some kind. But you know, uh, nothing about the the things that make the market move. I I don't know what you know. I'm I have an MBA in, in finance from Indiana, and I still don't understand GDP. And uh, I don't think anybody else does either because they change it so much. But these employment numbers, back you know, back when I was trading in the 80s, John, and at, on the floor, it wasn't employment numbers. It was M1, M2. And believe me, if we were on the floor and they had M1, M2 numbers like we have now, gold would be yeah. at 5,000 and climbing. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's... You know, it's just uh, you look at where you look at where M1 and M2 was when we were on the floor back in the early 80s, and where it is now. It would be the equivalent of looking at Hong Kong real estate in 1903 and where Hong Kong real estate is now. And uh, it is, of course, still climbing, but uh, that that's what the chart would look like. It be it would be like a several flagpole, well, a dozen flagpoles, one on top of the other, you know, going up to the sky because that's what's happened to our money supply. Uh, that that's my two cents worth. <laughs> Very good. Thanks so much for that, Larry. I wanted to, um, if time permits, to to share one last trading feature. It's kind of an important market concept which applies or which has applied to the big rally in wheat and big. It's been a big six-day move in the larger scheme of things, not that big, but wheat has has moved uh, decisively higher the past six days. Indeed. Uh, we're going to go through that with uh, Rich tomorrow because, you know, he is a wheat farmer himself, so he has some information on that, and we're also watching corn and beans because there could be some, you know, sympathetic buying just for short covering, you know, because these markets are so bearish uh, with this big crop that's supposedly coming. We're going to talk about that with Rich Anderson tomorrow, if that's okay. Terrific. We'll look forward to that. Thanks for your time, Larry. You bet. Thanks for calling in, John. It's always a pleasure talking to you, my friend. Right. Okay, we've, you bet. We've got a uh, another good friend from Florida, uh, Scott, in Tampa, Florida. There, Are you there, Scott? Hey, Larry. Thanks for taking my call. Oh, thank you for holding on, my friend. I really appreciate it. I'm going to put your chart up that you sent me yeah. because it, it shows a little bit bigger, a better version of um, what I was trying to do. I used it on an hourly chart, and you've done it on the daily and this uh, it makes a really nice chart. So I'm going to put this in so our viewers uh, can take a look at it. And you can uh, sort of describe what you were going to mention to me here. Yeah. Now, I'm going to kind of veer away from some of the things you generally look at because I know, you know, you know I understand. This is good. This is good. I, I like to have a secondary eyes looking at it. So fire uh, away. Okay. Uh, but I just wanted to uh, give you a thought on, um, uh, on similarities and differences and, and then try ask you for your opinion regarding some differences in the price pattern. So on the left is gold; it's a daily. On the right is silver. Uh, they both retraced six one eight. On the gold on the left, you kind of see. I'm going to use some free, literary freedom here, but you kind of see organized buy and selling. You know, you see patterns of lower lows, lower highs, but you see. Uh, a, a pretty good indication that buyers are stepping in because you can see the stepping lower on on gold. So there's some difference in the way buyers and sellers are interacting on that chart on the left to sellers uh, to the silver on the right. And what you see on silver for the last uh, seven days or so, I don't know exactly how many, you see this constant press, lower tops and bottoms of bars that take you down to the same level, 618. And actually, the last bar down, that, that bare bar, that red bar, it stops right on the 618. Yeah, to the exact and, penny, yes. Uh, to the exact penny. And to, to my thinking, that is a very uh, – now, I know you're not into manipulation of markets or – um, you know, good guys, bad guys, whatever's going on there. But there's a different pattern to to the silver because of the way it presses down like that, almost like something that could be a V formation or some last move lower. It looks terrible, 
But it does, you don't yes. see buyers. Yeah. You don't see buyers there. All you see is yeah. selling until there are no more sellers, which you figure out later. It's not there. What do you think about that? I don't see that as as necessarily bearish. It could be a setup for a very big turnaround because once there are no sellers, all you got are buyers that's, and that's sellers correct. getting out. We had the first uh, the first uh, shot across the bow was today, and if you know if you were looking at the gold uh, and and silver running together, you know silver would be a dollar an ounce higher than where it is right now. And the fact that, as you pointed out on that chart, it can't even get above the sixty one percent retracement of yesterday's range and those three bottoms that it made you know jamming down there really hard the fact that it stopped exactly at the 61 percent retracement tells me that if we ever go below that 61 percent retracement look out because uh there was no bounce i mean gold bounced a lot it took out the highs of the last couple of uh, days or five or six days whereas silver couldn't even take out the highs of yesterday so that's what how that's how i interpret it well let me just comment on that for a second and ask you a uh, another question. First of all, those yellow uh, boxes that I have in both charts, yes. um, I mean, that's just measuring a previous uh, retracement and then putting a yellow box lower to see how the market responded. So basically, the first time in July when uh, gold went up, it went up about 33 bucks, and it's almost done that from now. It's retraced in a similar fashion to the retracement it had earlier in July. And then, it, and I did the same thing in silver. And silver, the, the, the numbers aren't right if people can see them, but it went up about 70 cents uh, when it bounced higher. That's the top yellow box. And today it's done half of that. It, and that's the bounce you were talking about. Um, but um, what would it take for you? Uh, and I, you said well, how bad it would be if the market went lower in silver. What does it take for the market to change in a way for you to feel this um, silver is actually a setup, was a setup for a buy? We just didn't see the signal yet. What does it have to do uh, uh, to be a buyer? Scott, what it have to do to me is so far today's high is exactly 61% of the high we made uh, yesterday. Now, if we get above the 786 of the high of yesterday, that would be telling me that that's what's going to, that it's probably going to do what gold did, only it just happened a little bit later. So once we get another 12 or 14 cents higher than where we are high of the day today, that would tell me this market is really getting ready to accelerate because that's what happened to gold. And it might be just a little late uh, occurring. Remember that the, the number of, of traders are six times what they are uh, for silver because the open interest is six times in gold was what it is in silver. So there's a huge market in gold, not so much in silver. So you have to take that uh, into account also. But, you know, like you've pointed out on the chart, it's it's perfect Fibonacci-wise. I mean, you have three beautiful A, B, C, D patterns in silver stopping exactly at the 61% retracement, which was yesterday's low. Uh, it was down 20-some cents, and it stopped exactly at that number could not take that low out today and then has had a, a rally but again it wasn't very much so it's got to get above that 78 percent level of yesterday's high which would be 14 cents higher than the high we've made today then that would tell me that this thing is getting ready to go another 60 or 70 cents okay then one does, does last that help? question yeah, it does. One last question. If the dollar gets, I mean, I don't know how close are you, you uh, let's say we're off. I think we're off, aren't we? No, no, no. You, you, stay with, you stay with, you stay, you no, no, you come back. Stay with us, okay? okay. All right, okay. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. 
The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with our friend Scott from uh, Tampa. Scott, you're still there. I'm still here, and uh, I kind of know what your answer is going to default to. Uh, it's going to be technical analysis, but uh, <laughs> my, uh, but uh, you know, Larry, when you were looking at the uh, Japanese yen, I'm looking at the forex. It's going. It went down in the forex. The CAD and the CHF were going down. I mean, they were good shorts earlier today, as far as I'm concerned. The the euro, while the yen was going down. Uh, was going up. Uh, gold is going up. It seems to me that with all of these markets moving in a way that that is consistent with the dollar, uh, you know, the, you know, it, they all are linked in some way to the dollar. Uh, it seems that it, that uh, um, you know 
if the dollar is going down or these other uh, these other currencies are going in uh, a direction that's consistent with some weakness in the dollar, that uh, that could influence um, your general thought of where, since we're talking about metals, where the metals might go. Do you have any comment? I mean, I know you say stay technical, but I know you see relationships in markets that are... Uh, uh yeah, I know yeah. I see the relationship on the chart, but when I try to think about what could possibly be causing it, I, I get it's a quagmire that I cannot uh, cannot handle. My 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 little gray matter is not able to do it. So if I just look at the chart, and I'm looking for a pattern, and if I see higher bottoms, it's a a bullish pattern. If I see lower tops, it's a bearish pattern. I don't really care what the news is. Uh, I really don't know. And all I try to do is to react to what I'm seeing. The problem with, with what you're thinking about there, Scott, and I, you're very bright. I, I have, the fact that I know you uh, is the fact that you're, you're thinking too much and you want to be uh, thinking more about wh you know where to enter and how much you're going to risk as to why it happens. It's not important why. It might be to you, but it's not to me uh, because I'm interested in, in, in you know, making a dollar or two. Or, or three, you know, whatever I can get. But uh, the news behind it, you know, is just, uh, you know, it's just, it just doesn't really count. A perfect example of that is nine one one. You know, the market uh, we were closed for five days. The market bottomed a few days after that, had a huge rally, and then went down and made a much much lower low. You know, later in uh, later late in that. Uh, I think it was around January, February of '02 is where we finally, uh, you know, made the bottom. So for short term, it, it meant, uh, you know, a short term bottom. But longer term, the bottom wasn't for another seven or eight months. So I, I can't watch the news, Scott. It drives me crazy. That's why I watch okay. Trading Places a hundred times. <laughs> well, I'm talking more than news. I'm talking looking at other charts. Sure. You know, oh yeah, so look at I, I watch I, I watch yeah, I watch interrelationships. That I do. You know, I certainly do that. But I don't know what they mean. That's the that's the key. I I don't know what the you know, like today I was watching gold and silver because I happen to be long gold and I was watching silver and I said, Why can't silver get out of its own way? And it couldn't even, you know, get to the we made just exactly the sixty one percent retracement of yesterday's high. And I'm saying, boy, I better be really careful here in the gold because if silver can't get moving, gold's going to have some problems. And that's basically what I was, uh, you know, what I was watching. Okay. Well, I do appreciate it. Thank you for the time and, and all the explanations. Very much appreciated. You're looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Thanks for calling in, <laughs> Scott. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, okay. You bet. Uh, that's uh, if, you, if you ever watched the movie uh, Trading Places. The it was looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis, and I uh, use that all the time. So uh, anyway, we're going to be ending our show here pretty soon. Uh, I want to remind you, I have Rich Anderson on tomorrow. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.